today's tutorial video, we're going to be talking about patterns, and we're going to be talking about how to create this cool looking speaker grill um, using patterns in Adobe Illustrator. Um, you can use this effect for um, illustrations of guitar amps like I have here. We could even use it for a nice looking website background as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a brand new document here, because that's what I'm assuming you will be doing as well. In my tutorial videos, I, I don't like to go step by step of how to create exactly what I made. I think it's a lot better to teach you the techniques and you can come up with your own thing. So that's what we're going to do. So let's start with, um, let me delete these previous layers that I have. Let's start with a background layer. So I'm hitting M, I'm going to bring up the keyboard shortcut for the rectangle tool. And I'm going to drag out from corner to corner a solid rectangle. Okay, so I don't know what uh, color you'll get because uh, it'll just do whatever was used last. What we're going to do is we want to create um, this dark gray. So this is almost the same color as my user interface background, which is kind of distracting, but I think that's the color I want. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command C to copy that same shape. We're going to create a new layer in our layers panel, layer two. And since our, this is going to be our pattern fill layer, so since we want it the same dimensions as our bottom layer, and that's why we copied it, we're going to hit Command Shift V to paste that directly on top of our other layer. Um, you might not see anything happen, but it did happen. There's two gray rectangles right now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, do our, going to go up to our swatches panel, and there's a little flyout menu right here, um, which is our swatches library. We're going to go down to Patterns, Basic Graphics, Dots. Now, if you've never experimented with uh, the uh, these pattern swatches um, in the swatches panel here in the library, you should really do that because, man, there's some great looking stuff in here that when added onto things really give a great, great effect to illustrations, to logos, to backgrounds. Um, you'll see how to use these in, these in this tutorial video. So we're going to go to Dots. And let's select one. I think this one looks pretty good. I like the space between the two. Okay. I have a couple old ones in here that I was using earlier. I want to delete those so I don't confuse them. Okay. That's the one we selected. If you want to make the pattern in your shape larger without affecting the shape itself, you go up to Window, Transform, and there's a little flyout menu on the top right here, the settings for the transform panel. Now make sure you have transform pattern only selected. By default, I believe it has it's going to be transform both, but you want transform pattern only. Let's put that up a bit to 2000. See how that made the pattern larger without increasing the shape of the rectangle? Okay. So there's a little problem with black patterns. Um, especially the default ones in Adobe Illustrator. If I had a pattern that was color, I could easily go up in the Recolor Artwork dialog box here and change around the hues and change all the colors of the pattern really easily if it was in color. Unfortunately, if black, let's say I wanted to make this red, okay, the, 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 the dots red. If I hit the red swatch, well, it's going to make the whole thing red. If I go up to Recolor Artwork dialog box and go to Edit and make this red here, you can see, I'll even hit OK, see nothing happened here. That's because the black has no color information, so Illustrator cannot manipulate that. Luckily, in Illustrator CS6, there's a, an easy fix for that. And all we need to do is, with our shape selected, double click on the pattern swatch that we have in our swatches panel. And I'm going to hit Z to bring up my magnifying glass and zoom in here. You should see something similar to this. You're going to see these black circles and the gray ones around it. These are going to be the ones that we want to select. You could hit V to bring up your selection tool. And make sure you select each and every one of these guys right here. You could hold Shift to make sure uh, you have them all. You could toggle Command H to if that's getting in your way, the little anchor points there. But I can indeed see that these are all selected. Now I could go up to my black here, because these aren't really black. These are kind of like a dark, dark, dark gray. Um, this is true black. So if I double click on the swatch, I see it's 
for my RGB, it's 0, 0, 0. That's going to be a, a pure rich black. That's what I want. If you wanted, you can make these red or any color for that example. For, uh, for that matter. If you hit Command-Z, you'll go back and I have the blacks I want. Now we want to create a little lighting effect on each one of these circles on the grill. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, with these still selected, hit Command-C and Command-Shift-V to paste it in place. It's going to be our highlight color, so we're going to want this a little lighter. Hit Command Shift left bracket to send it to the back, and you hit Command H to hide those anchor points. And with my right arrow, I'm going to nudge out my highlight to the side a little bit, so you can see that poking out right there. Now, when I hit Escape, I can see I have a highlight on each one of these little circles, which is really neat. In doing so, I this has shrunk down the pattern to its original size, so I'm going to go through those same steps I went through earlier and make that larger again. There we go. Okay. Now, if you don't have Illustrator CS6, you're going to have problems here because you won't be able to change the colors of that black by double-clicking a swatch. So, I have you covered in this video also. Um, we're going to go ahead and open up an older version of Illustrator here. This is going to be Illustrator CS5. Now I wish I already had this open so it doesn't have to load. While that's loading, for those who are still following, um, hit the new layer. So we're going to have layer 3. And do the same thing. We're going to copy that background layer, lock it again, lock, lock my pattern fill. Make sure on layer 3, hit Command Shift V to paste that in place. And we're going to go down to our gradient button, hit Gradient. Yours isn't going to look like this, um, but we'll go into that in just a second. Um, for those of you who aren't using CS6, uh, you could go ahead and I'm going to put up a little, little marker right here. Click on this to continue where we left off. Uh, for those who are using older versions and need to learn how to recolor their pattern swatches, uh, you could continue on. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Illustrator CS5. I'm going to open up a new document. Okay, this is how we're going to recolor black pattern fills in older versions. This is a little unconventional, but this is the only way I've learned this could be done. Um, if you know another way, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, the other, other way I personally know besides this way I'm going to show you is rasterizing an object and using a live trace um, to create again, changing the color. That's too many steps for me. Um, so I'm going to show you what I do. Um, so here's a shape. I'm going to do this really quick. Here's our shape, and I'm going to go to the patterns, piece of graphic, dots, and I'm, there's our dots we're going to use. Okay. Now, there's no way for me to color these in the Recolor Artwork dialog box or using a swatch. If I double click it, nothing happens, um, except for the swatch options, but I cannot change the color of it. So what do we do in a situation like this? Well, you could actually take that swatch and drag it straight out of the swatches panel and release it into our artboard. You can see right here that there's going to be a, a square. Um, it's actually invisible. You can't see that square, but it is there. When we select it all, we see there's a square there. Those are the parameters set um, for our pattern. Um, it's with, it's, all it really is is a tiled pattern of this square. Okay. So what, as you can see, they're all grouped together right now. If I drag one, they all go with it. You need to ungroup that. Command Shift G. Now make sure all of those shapes are selected. I could actually just use the magic wand tool. Now we could go ahead and make this the color we need. I'm going to go ahead and create a 0, 0, 0 black. Okay, there it is. Now it's, going, now it's the black that we want. Okay, select everything you hit again, hit Command G to group it again. Take it all and drag it back into the swatches panel. Okay. Now, I'll just get rid of that. When we create a shape and give it the fill, see how that changed? Here's our old one, and here's our new one. Click. I don't know if you noticed that, but it's a different color. It's the darker black. So that's how you go about doing it. Okay. I'm going to switch back 
now to CS6. In this last step, we're creating um, a radial gradient that's almost acting like a vignette um, over our illustration here. So what we're going to do, yours probably isn't going to look like this. It's going to probably look like something like this without the opacity here. Okay, so you're not going to be able to see the pattern we made underneath. With the gradient box up, we're going to make sure we have this selected and we're going to go to radial. You might be on linear, make sure it's on radial. Let's put both of our swatches to black. You could take those swatches directly from the swatch panel and drag them over to the gradient annotator. They're both black. We're going to click the one on the left here and go to opacity zero. That's going to make the center transparent. If we want to fool around with this a little bit more and change it around, we could hit G. This is going to bring our gradient annotator. We could actually use these controls to manipulate our little um, vignette here. Okay. And that is all you have to do to create a realistic looking speaker grill uh, for various things in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I'd like to see what you've created using the speaker grill effects and I hope you learned something new today about patterns um, or how to change colors of black patterns um, in any version of Illustrator. So I hope that was helpful and uh, I will see you next time. Make sure that you go into the description box below and find the link to the vector sector which is my Facebook group which I have all sorts of fun tips and tricks there. Till then see you next time.